Okay, the argument I chose to discuss um, discusses the lack of benefits of standardized testing given to students across the country. The argument further examines how standardized tests are not beneficial to the students or the educators. Over the years, an increase in prevalence of those standardized tests has increased to an all-time high and now play such a prominent role in the educational system across the United States. These standardized tests, which are meant to determine the student's growth and learning, often lead to positive based results based on superficial thinking or guessing of answers rather than students actively learning and recalling past information. There's a large variance among sources throughout not only the country, but each state as well due to a variance in communities, parental educational backgrounds, and parental presence at home. Standardized tests tend to measure the temporary memorization of facts and skills, including the skill of test taking itself, more than a genuine understanding of the information that the students are being tested on. The more successful the students are in scoring of the exams, the better the evaluation of teachers. Education is now driven by multiple testing and not the pa passion of educating students as it should be. This is naive and callous and like any other example of minimizing the relevance of structural constraints in education today ultimately serving the interest of those fortunate enough not to face them, leaving the rest to struggle to succeed. So that's just a general overview of the argument itself, obviously discussing the lack of benefits of standardized testing in the US. Um, I've generalized four of the main premises of the argument. The first premise is many school systems have adjusted their school year curriculum to focus on preparing students for the standardized tests rather than learning the coursework of the given grade in the curriculum, enabling the school to score higher on the standardized tests, benefiting the school's funding and teacher evaluations, but not benefiting the student's learning experience for future years to come. The second premise um, discusses how elementary school students are classified as actively engaged in learning when they ask questions of themselves while they read and try to connect what they were doing to past learning compared to superficially engaged when they just copy down answers, um, make guesses, and skip the more difficult parts of an exam. And it turns out that the higher scores on standardized tests were more likely to be found among students who exhibited this superficial learning approach rather than being actively engaged, so once again not benefiting the students. The third premise discusses how virtually all experts and organizations condemn the practice of basing important decisions such as graduation or promotion based on the results of one single test. If major organizations don't support this view of basing a student's growth in education based solely on a test, then why do we continue to endorse such a process in the country? And the fourth and last premise is that school systems with more funding focus on preparing students for testing are the ones with the higher testing scores, leaving lower income districts at a disadvantage. These students and teachers alike are put at a disadvantage if, not, if they're not from an affluent school district, discrediting the testing as fair or standardized in any matter, making it incapable of creating a standard to judge the educational system by. So generally, the schools with more money to put towards preparing the students and the funds to delegate the tasks of teaching them test taking skills are the ones that are more successful in the standardized tests, leaving the lower income school districts at an unfair disadvantage and continually putting them at a higher risk for low test scores. So the conclusion of the argument is that standardized testing is not benefiting the students or the educators and it's threatening the success of our educational system. I would say that this argument is valid. The claims in the argument aren't really controversial. Um, I found multiple top um, variety of articles discrediting the benefits of standardized testing um, and it's been a fairly common topic of debate over the past 10 years. And I do feel that the conclusion does follow the standard, um, does follow the premises of the argument that standardized exams are in fact not so standard and they're not serving their purpose 
and the rewards and punishments distributed based among the outcome of testing is not benefiting school systems that in fact do need the extra help and instead is doing the opposite by driving teachers out of the profession or out of jobs due to these low test scores in lower income school districts and continuing not to give those students a fair education. Um, the only thing I did have to say about the argument that I wasn't as happy about was I wish that the author gave more cited information um, about some of their opinions on the argument. They did provide some detailed asides underneath um, topics in the argument, such as when they were discussing about how virtually all relevant experts and organizations do not base decisions on a single test. Um, and they mentioned how the Nas National Research Council takes this position, as do many other um, professional organizations, such as the American Educational Research Association and the American um, Psychological Association but no actual citation was provided. So they were just mentioned in an aside below the text, but there was no proper referencing. Um, but aside from the lack of proper referencing of citations and sources, I found that the argument was pretty sound um, and the conclusion itself was drawn from the premises.